so thank you very much for the introduction. Um, <coughs> and yes, so uh, my title has something in it with uh, a random uh, tensors of unitaries. Unitaries uh, and and their strong convergence. So <coughs> this is uh, mostly um, joint work in preparation with uh, work in preparation with uh, Charles Bordenave. Um, but I'm going to, to mention uh, by passing a few a few motivating and preliminary results which which have already been uh, <coughs> published. So let me start with some. Uh, uh, a notation. Um, so I, I'm going to call this uh, the free group on degenerators. Free group on degenerators, and I'm going to call them uh, U1 down to. Uh, UD, <coughs> and um, well, the, the, f the free group, it means that there is no relation between uh, the generators except, of course, that's, you know, the UI, UI inverse, or UI inverse UI uh, equals one. <coughs> so if I want to, if I want to represent uh, the, the free group, the free group what it means is, uh, is I have to pick I have to pick uh, unitaries uh, u1 um, maybe okay this is this, this is capital u1 this is small u1s u d which belong to some unit which are some unitary matrices so once once I have this, I can determine um, the morphism from, from the group here to the unitary group there by uh, replacing. So if I, have, if I have a word W, which belongs to the, to, the free, to the free group, I can turn it into a unitary matrix, W, um, let me call it WN. So here maybe I will, I will put some Ns here. Uh, just by replacing uh, each generator by um, the, the matrix which I chose here and each uh, inverse by the inverse of the matrix here which turns out to be uh, the, the adjoint. <coughs> and uh, one is interested in trying to understand what, uh, what happens uh, typically, what is the typical behavior? So, which means uh, it can mean many things, but I will mostly focus on the case where all the UINs are uh, IID, hard distributed. So, I have the on the unitary group, I have this unique uh, left and right uh, translation invariant uh, probability measure. And I pick each of these guys at random according to, to this in the unitary group. And I would like to try to see, to see what happens. Um, and there was this, uh, this, uh, this very uh, important result which was proved by Voiculescu. Uh, in uh, well, the first version was 92, but but there was a, an improvement in 98, <coughs> which is that uh, for any uh, for any uh, word in the for any element of the free group, if I look uh, under this assumption here of taking um, a random representation of the free group. So uh, if I look at this, 1 over n 
trace of Wn. See what I'm doing here is given the word, uh, I replace each generator by a random matrix, and I obtain here a random unitary matrix, which in general is not uh, distributed according to the Haar measure. Uh, and I look at the normalized trace of, uh, of this. So now this is a, a complex valued a random variable. And the result of the Rekulescu's statement is that as n goes to infinity, this converges almost surely to 1 if, um, e is the, if w is the trivial word and 0 else. So of course, if one is the if uh, if we are talking about the trivial word, then this is a, this is an empty statement because the trace of the identity is uh, is n. <coughs> but uh, as soon as w is not the trivial word, then this is a, this is a non-trivial statement, <coughs> and this result is true <coughs> um, as n goes to infinity, almost surely over uh, over um, a sequence over any uh, sequence of uh, indexed by, uh, by, by the dimension n of uh, d-tuple of, uh, of random, random matrices. And actually, it doesn't matter how I choose this, uh, this sequence. The only thing which matters is uh, that the marginals at a given dimension uh, satisfy this, um, this property here. So, <coughs> uh, so this is, by the way, the technical uh, word here is that this is it's, it's asymptotic freeness. Asymptotic freeness. of uh, uh, u i n. <coughs> and one important consequence of this <coughs> is now if I, if I go one, one step up and I look instead of it, of, of the free group, at the so-called uh, free group algebra. Free group algebra. So this is just this is just the, the collection of of linear combinations of um, of words, so abstract linear combinations of words, so something like alpha w times w, where this is um, a finite subset um, <coughs> or maybe it's you know the the, the function alpha w is, is zero almost everywhere, except for a finite number of, of things. So if I take, <coughs> so this is what I will like to call um, a non-commutative polynomial in the, in the words uh, ui and ui star. And <coughs> here we have a natural involution. We have a, a which uh, works as follows. I just say that alpha w times w uh, star is alpha w conjugate times w inverse. <coughs> and <coughs> now I can, I, can follow, I can follow the same idea. I can, in the same way as I can represent the, the group, I can also represent the algebra again by picking, by picking unitaries. And so if I have a P, I can turn it into, into a PN again by replacing the UIs by UIN. And um, um, so given, given any element in the free group algebra, I have a random matrix model which is interested, which we would like to study as, N <coughs> as the dimension N goes to infinity. And one of the things which we can say from, uh, from Voiculescu's result, this is quite elementary, but, but still, is that if, okay, if P is self-adjoint, which means that the associated matrix model itself is self-adjoint as well, then I can look at its uh, eigenvalues, eigenvalues which I'm, go, which I'm going to which are real and therefore I can order um, like this, lambda one n down to lambda n. And then I can look 
at the um, eigenvalue uh, counting measure, which uh, I would call like this, mu pn, which is uh, 1 over n sum for i between 1 and n of Dirac mass at uh, lambda i n. So this is, um, and what we have, it follows from this actually, um, I, with a little bit of work, not too much, that this actually converges towards some probability measure which depends on P. So there exists, so the statement is there exists a probability measure mu which, is, which depends on P. So this is a probability measure on uh, the compactly supported probability measure on the real uh, line such that um, almost surely this uh, eigenvalue, this normalized eigenvalue counting measure converges to, <coughs> to mu p. And um, the, way, the way to see it <coughs> is just to, to observe it against some nice test functions. So if I, if I look at this, for example, so if I look at polynomial test functions, uh, integral x l uh, d mu p n <coughs> of x, <coughs> well, it's quite uh, uh, simple to see that this is equal to 1 over n trace of p uh, n um, to the power l. And this guy, again, is an element of the group algebra. So if I expand, I can use, I can use this, uh, this result here. And this you know, seemingly um, dull, uh, like 0, 1 kind of flow, actually, it gives some very non-trivial uh, results here. <coughs> the computation of mu is something which can be done systematically. This is one of the main objects of free probability theory. I'm not going to, uh, to discuss it um, uh, today. <coughs> But once we have this, <coughs> basically what we know is that if I, if I look from far away at, at the spectrum, well, if, if, for example, if I plot, the, if I plot a, a histogram of, um, of, of, um, of a random occurrence of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a random sample of, of, my, of my random matrix, then um, the histogram is close to the, to the, limit, to the limiting histogram. This is, but uh, one might want to 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 check more precise things, and um, so maybe I will call you know it so um, you know, um, extreme so um, so if we want to study let's say so so if we want to compare, so let, let's, let's, let's look at, at, two, at, uh, at two questions. The first one is compare the operator norm of Pn and the operator norm of P. <coughs> so here, um, the op here I think of P as being uh, um, an element which acts on L2 of the free group. You see, uh, this, <coughs> this guy here, um, each, uh, sorry, sorry, e each, uh, each element of the free group acts by translation over the free group. So it's, uh, so it's, it's, uh, it acts as a unitary operator. So each element uh, UI, I can think of it as a bounded operator, and then I can make linear operations here. So I have, a, I have an operator norm, and the question is how to compare this norm and, and that norm. So this is basically try to say something about the largest eigenvalue here. <coughs> and a second question would, would be to compare the spectrum of, uh, of Pn and uh, the spectrum. And the spectrum of P. <coughs> so again, P here, 
viewed as, as a self adjoint operator here. Um, <coughs> and well, it turns out, so for example, what one can easily say is, uh, maybe I can write here, uh, we can easily say about one that uh, Voiculescu's result uh, implies that if I look at the limit uh, inf as n goes to infinity of the operator norm of Pn, it has to be, so this is well defined of course, and it has to be at least the operator norm of P. <coughs> um, what could happen is that there could be a few uh, eigenvalues which are too big, who are wandering around, which could, uh, which could uh, make this ine inequality be strict. <coughs> but, but the other way around can't, uh, uh, can't happen. And, um, well, uh, I will start with um, the following maybe fact uh, from operator algebra which is that if uh, uh, the following are equivalent, the first one, the first thing is, maybe I should say, well, it's the same one and two and uh, all purpose somehow. So for all P, for any polynomial, any um, non quantity polynomial, uh, the operator norm of Pn converges to the operator norm of P is equivalent to for all p, the Hausdorff distance between the spectrum of Pn and the spectrum of p goes to zero, as n goes to infinity each time. <coughs> um, and uh, if these things hold, this is called if they hold. This is called strong, this is what we call strong convergence. And here I will say uh, uh, two words, two words uh, asymptotically, two words free variables. Two parentheses. Um, so you see, uh, the fact that two in place one is, uh, is, is, uh, is trivial. Uh, but the other way around is not completely trivial. So you, you could imagine some situation where, where maybe you have a spectrum which is, uh, is non-connected and somehow um, then if the Hausdorff distance, what one of the reasons why the Hausdorff distance could not tend to zero is if there would be, let's say, one eigenvalue wandering in the middle somehow. The bottom, the bottom, yeah, right, yeah, exactly, yeah. Even, even, the, even the bottom, right. And <coughs> somehow here, the, well, the, the important thing is that, is that we are making, a, uh, we are quantifying over, over all p's, and in this case, actually, the seemingly weaker uh, result is equivalent to, is equivalent to that one. <coughs> and um, the, the theorem that, uh, that uh, I proved together with uh, Camille, uh, seven years ago, approximately. Uh, yes, yes, can be mad, sorry. Uh, 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 so 2012 uh, is that uh, um, if I take, so U1 and UDN are strongly, well, so, so they, they satisfy. They satisfy the, they satisfy the, pr the properties above, asymptotically asymptotically um, free. So I will, um, I will get back to, uh, to, to it in, in, one, in one second. Um, yes. 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 Exactly, yes. The regular, exactly the left regular Yes. So what this says is that in a strong sense, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it says, yeah. 
And by the way, since, uh, so, since you are uh, um, mentioning this, let me, let me actually uh, write an, another uh, fact from, from uh, so another fact uh, from operator algebra, which is quite mysterious actually, uh, which says that actually, um, so this result which I call star here, implies Voiculesco. Uh, so let, let me let me uh, explain a little bit. Um, you see here, in principle, I don't ask anything about about the the, the traces. Voiculesco still says that you know, we the traces have some given asymptotic behavior, and this asymptotic behavior gives us, gives us a candidate for P, and so on and so forth. <coughs> and here what I say is, I, f I first say, well, looking at the spectrum or at the largest eigenvalue is actually the same. And here I, I said, once we know the behavior of the norm, we know automatically the behavior of all traces. And this is uh, because, so I will just write the, a catchphrase, which is, uh, there exists only one uh, faithful tracial state on the reduced on well I will just write uh, uh, on the reduced system algebra of the of the free group so I'm not going to to, to explain too many details, but, but there is here a C-star algebra, and this C-star algebra is known to have only one trace as soon as the, uh, you know, of course, if this one, this is, this is outrageously false, but uh, as soon as this is bigger than two, this result is true, and somehow it's, it's quite surprising that understanding the norm gives for free uh, everything, um, because you see what you could do is you could always say, well, let's, let's, pick, a, let's pick a converging subsequence, and, uh, and the convergence sequence is tracial, and then and then the limit has to be has to be what it is. So I'm I'm wondering I'm wondering whether this kind of you know um, uh, uh, theoretical facts could not be used uh, elsewhere in the random matrix theory. But that's that's just a, a remark. <laughs> so actually there are many there are many cases where. Where, where this limiting object is, is known in, in this case. Um, maybe, it could, maybe in this case it could be uh, studied as well, yeah. <coughs> Are there some, some non-dimension uh, uh, First of all, convergence to a sorry. So uh, yes, here I okay. So I didn't uh, specify my quantifier here. Uh, it's uh, here. My quantifier is over all all polynomials, even non non -sepher. But it's because you know it's because the operator norm of p times p star equals the operator of p the, the operator norm of p square. So. That's more subtle. I, I see it that, uh, I see that we have it in some cases, but, uh, but not always. This, it does not follow. Uh, it's not completely clear from, from, from this result, as, as far as I can tell. Well, here it's uh, every. Sorry. So. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <coughs> okay. So um, now, <coughs> what we want is um, somehow the um, the um, the motivation for what follows. 
is uh, uh, find examples, find other other examples with less randomness. In a sense, what um, what people could uh, could argue uh, somehow is well here I, I just take taking the hard the hard measure is is extremely um, is a, is an extremely gross thing to do, uh, and uh, and maybe if we have much less randomness we we could still have we could still have asymptotic freeness or strong asymptotic freeness. So um, let me uh, well. So, so, so basically, the, the the idea is which I want on which I want to to focus today is to is to look uh, at uh, uh, tensor examples, and I will uh, give uh, I will give uh, three uh, three examples uh, first. So, so the first one which you could uh, look at is now I could look at um, uh, U one. Uh, Tensor, uh, let's say, and now I will put the n here, tensor n times, u d tensor n times, and the u i's themselves they will be in a fixed in a fixed uh, fixed uh, matrix uh, uh, in the fixed group. So ma let's say for example u i, they they are i i d, and they belong to for example let's say S u two, or or any other or another another you know a compact group so um so you see here this is a random matrix which belongs here to m to the 2 to the n see it's it's n it's n to n fold tensor uh, <coughs> another example would be uh, u uh, 1 tens v1 U D tends V D, where V I are a fixed uh, unitaries, and U I are high I D hard. And the third example is U uh, one tends. Here I will put L. U D tends. L, where the, all the UIs now they belong to the unitary group N. So you see here, uh, here har in UN, here in UN as well. So here, each time my parameter which goes to infinity is N. And um, in all three cases, let me let me comment orally on on all three cases. In all three cases. Um, uh, asymptotic freeness, asymptotic freeness is uh, is easy to check. So, so the counterpart of this is quite uh, is quite easy to check. <coughs> uh, let me outline briefly why this is true. In, in the case two and in the case three, you see that when I take a word, when I take a word, the trace becomes the product of two traces. But on the left, I have this guy, which is understood. And on the right, I have a trace of another unitary. So this is bounded. You see, then, then it's the, this, zero, this zero one thing will still, uh, will still work out if, uh, if the VIs are unitary. So actually, something, I mean, I worked this out in more detail with uh, my, stu my former students uh, uh, who is now a PhD student in, in Princeton, uh, Pierre-Yves Godreau-Lamar. Godreau-Lamar. Um, and, uh, well, it's, it, by the way, so this is, this is closely related to something which is called the absorption trick. Absorption trick, which is uh, uh, something which is very uh, often used in, uh, in non-commutative uh, harmonic analysis. Uh, um, so it's uh, something which is uh, developed quite a lot by uh, by Pizier um, and so on. That can be seen as a particular. Well, it can almost be seen as a particular case of this one. I mean, it can can be uh, seen in detail. But I'm mentioning it because I want to I want to uh, 
to spend more time on it uh, afterwards. And that one is perhaps even simpler in a sense, you see. Uh, here, the, the only observation which needs to be, to be made is that if I pick, uh, if I pick D uh, generators, if I pick D uh, unitaries, D uh, matrices at random in SU2 with probability one, they generate a free group. So if they generate a free group, then the, and okay, and maybe uh, uh, a word does not, uh, does not land in, I mean, okay. <laughs> anyway, the, um, with probability one, the trace of any word in U1, UD um, is, uh, is not one as soon as the word is not trivial. That's, that's not a very difficult fact to check. And then if it's not one, if it's strictly less than one, then it tends to zero after tensoring n times. Uh, <coughs> so so these, are, these are nice examples where, in a sense, we have less randomness, you see. If I compare with dimension, here I just, the dimension, the, the randomness is, is constant. Uh, here, the, here the dimension, you see, uh, the randomness is, it, the randomness has to go to infinity here, but arbitrarily slowly, in a sense. And uh, well, here it goes uh, slowly, uh, you know, it's still polynomial, but, but, uh, but I, can, I can improve things um, arbitrarily. So a question is, um, how about uh, a strong convergence in this, uh, in this case? And uh, the, the fact is that strong convergence does not hold in, uh, in general. So how about strong convergence? And so here, for example, for one, it does not hold, does not hold, and I will explain in one second. So for two, uh, it, uh, it holds if uh, uh, the dimension, you know, um, of, uh, of the ancillary matrices of the I is fixed. And actually it is known not to hold, does not hold if the dimension of, v of the matrices is, is very big, something like, I don't know, something like maybe exponential uh, n or n squared, something like this. Um, so that's the result by PZ. And uh, well, for three, it does not hold either does not hold in general. Uh, and let me, uh, so here, well actually, sorry, so I'm just going to modify a little bit my notation here, it's not very good, but uh, we put here u1 tens L, and here u1 bar tens L. So either I take orthogonal and I don't have this problem, or D tens U D bar tens L prime. <coughs> um, and well, the reason why it does not hold, but let, let me explain a little bit about about one and three uh, simultaneously. What we can uh, uh, the reason the reason is that. If I look at this sum for i between 1 and d of u i n times u i bar n, so this is the entrywise, the, the, the entrywise, entrywise conjugate, the operator norm of this is exactly d. This is quite, uh, this is quite uh, easy to check. What you have is you have an eigenvector which is sum of uh, EI tends EI for I between one um, and, and N, and EI is the canonical orthonormal basis of uh, C to the N. So this, uh, if, if it were strongly free, should be less than 
uh, 2 root d minus 1, something like this. And uh, 2 root d minus 1 plus, uh, plus epsilon. Um, and we have d, so of course uh, that's, that doesn't hold true. <coughs> the thing is that, so we have one outlier at least. But the, the, the thing is that the outlier that we have actually has a very simple reason. Um, the outlier comes from the fact that if I think, here you see this, this is an element which belongs to mn of c, tensor mn of c. And I can think of it as a representation of the unitary group. And this representation has a fixed point. So the fact that, that there is a fixed point somehow explains why we have, why we have uh, uh, this outlier. So the nature of question somehow becomes, is it the only obstruction? And, and our answer is, uh, is yes, basically. So this is the only obstruction. Um, so I'm going now to, to quote this theorem with, uh, with uh, Bordenave. So you, you um, OK, so let me <laughs> check my notes to make sure that I <laughs> Uh, okay, so so I'm I'm looking again at, at this one. So u one n tens l tens u one n tens l prime u d n tens L, tens U bar D, N, tens L prime. So I have D, U1, UD, R, IID, R, R in uh, U, uh, in the unitary group U1. And these guys here are strongly asymptotically Free um, as n goes to infinity, as long as l plus l prime is small in comparison to um, log so some constants, some some small. I mean, something which goes to infinity, something like this. Um, and actually, this result is false as is, um, as, as we saw. So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to, to introduce this. And the notation here is, is where if A is a random variable, A bracket is A minus its expectation. So if I center my random variable, then it becomes strongly asymptotically free. And the point is centering means removing the so identity. It's really like when you take a, a random graph, the incidence matrix is not centered. You have one top eigenvalue which is very hot, which is center the second eigenvalue. Exactly, yeah, exactly. That's exactly the, the same phenomenon. We, we have some, everything which is, which is not the, the, the true representation, uh, um, yields a strong asymptotic um, uh, freeness. <coughs> so let me, um, let me now uh, outline a little bit how, how, how this works. Outline of the proof of the of the proof. <coughs> so, that one is constant it's, it's from, uh, is because it's the trivial protection. Oh yeah, so yeah, so this one will fluctuate as well. Yeah, 
we don't know. <laughs> we we would like to know, but that's uh, that's that's uh, that remains to be uh, uh, clarified. Um, okay, so the results with uh, with uh, with mal actually maybe I should start with with it was yeah. But so by the way, of course, this result uh, supersedes uh, this result. It's uh, it's uh, it generalizes this result. <coughs> um, in a sense, you see, um, maybe I should make one, one more remark before I, I get in, into the proof. Um, actually, here, if you just look, um, if you are just looking for asymptotic freeness, there, are, there exist some non-random examples of, of, of matrices which satisfy the condition. What you just do is probably you take, uh, you know, you take uh, probably the, 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 the the Lubotsky, Phillips, Sarnak, uh, Ramanujan graphs, and the generators, the unitary generators, they give you they give you a, a non-random example. It just follows from the fact that uh, that that locally, locally this behaves. Uh, the the KD graph is like a, f a free group. Uh, it's like the, f the KD graph of the free group, and that the girth uh, grows to grows to infinity. However, if we want to have strong freeness, there is no uh, no um, um, example which is known, which is non-random. And so somehow, since we don't know how to find a non-random example, we tr first try to look for examples which are less and less random. <coughs> um, and so uh, the initial proofs here, uh, so if I, if I look at, at the proof which I, which I did with, uh, with, with Camille uh, Mal, it was based basically on, uh, it was based basically on uh, a result by Hargrove and Torbjörnsen. So very, uh, very important, uh, like 110 pages, uh, analysis of mathematics, 2004, 2005 paper, where they prove uh, strong convergence, strong convergence for uh, IID, uh, GU is. And basically the, the idea is that is that behind all, the, all this there is lots of uh, lots of um, maybe I should say analysis. Uh, so analysis may be complex, so, so there is uh, still just transform uh, which and and lots of Schwinger uh, dice uh, so integration by by parts. <coughs> um, and Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so this one is a, this one was done by by Hargrove and, and Torbjörnsen. And actually, the, the original proof of uh, of strong convergence for unitaries follows follows from the from the one with uh, with with GUEs. However, this this strategy does not extend at all to the to the tensor setup. Uh, the thing is, we don't have enough uh, analysis available on, on tensor things. So what we have to do, and so that uh, that breaks down. And what we have to do instead is uh, um, do some uh, moment methods. Um, and the moment method, um, so the moment method, uh, mm, let's see, I have five minutes left, approximately. Okay, so um, maybe I will um, just write a few. <laughs> A few key, a few keywords of things which have already done been done and and explain a little bit what are the the specifics of um, of, of this of this work. So the moment method, the the idea in principle would be to try to to evaluate something like this trace of p n to the to the l of n where l of n grows at least like a, like logarithm. But that's just too hard. We just don't know how to how to make it work. There is the commutators are are too hard, <coughs> and um, that's too hard. So, so what we have to do instead is, so we developed um, uh, something which is called, um, and this was actually in, in my previous paper with uh, with uh, Charles Bordenave, uh, which was uh, uh, published uh, this year. So. Um, 
so we have to we have to develop um, something which is which we call the matrix valued uh, non backtracking um, uh, operator theory. So basically, we replace. So first of all, we replace the polynomial that we want to study by a linearized version. So I didn't speak about it, and I won't have time to speak about it. And then, this this new random matrix which we want to study, which is still too hard to study, we replace it by a random matrix which is which looks even harder, which is even bigger in a sense, but but it has a non backtrack it has a non backtracking property which which makes uh, which makes it very amenable to um, to doing some moment methods. So, and there is a relation between, this, between both spectra, which is you know, a nonlinear relation, which comes from non-backtracking theory, so which we had to extend to, the, to, to a matrix-valued setup because of, um, um, of the linearization. And then finally, finally, once we have this, we need to do, we need to do um, a moment method. So we need to evaluate, evaluate. Um, um, well, high moments, high moments in uh, entries of uh, the unitary group. So typically, we have to evaluate things like this: uh, uh, expectation of u i one j one, u i l j l. So it's my l out here. Then u bar i prime one j prime one u bar i prime uh, l prime j prime l prime. You see, this is a, a monomial which is as general as it can get in the u and the and the u bars. And we have to uh, and so there exists a formula for it which I won't uh, which I won't uh, uh, explain in detail. So this is called the Weingarten formula. But I will just finish by uh, explaining one uh, one tool which we didn't uh, 